Hey everybody, uh, thanks for joining us tonight. Um, really excited to do this. I've, I've been wanting to try the Facebook Live uh, feature for a while and uh, it was basically just a matter of finding time for, for me to do it and also to kind of schedule around all the, uh, the CW DC shows um, that are on every night of the week it seems like, which is a good thing of course. Um, but one of the things I wanted to do with this is not only kind of let you see um, what I do uh, in terms of my style, but also give you a little bit of information about the difference between this traditional piece and then uh, what I normally do when I work digitally. Um, obviously, we're drawing uh, Stephen Amell as Green Arrow. Uh, this is his season four costume. Um, and let me just thank Stephen for, for giving me a shout out for this. This is, uh, um, something, uh, when it's complete, I will have this at my Heroes and Villains, uh, Atlanta booth, um, possibly for sale, haven't decided yet. Um, anyway, so let's, uh, let's get started here. Um, as you can see, I've got a little bit done already. It's, um... I started with a digital drawing. Um, obviously, you might ask, well, why did I draw it digitally to then work traditionally? Um, and one of the reasons I switched to digital is that I had a lot of problems with pressing too hard with pencils uh, on the paper, and it would leave huge grooves, uh, especially in this kind of paper. This is kind of a soft Bristol board. Um, and that would make it impossible for me to erase. So I started with a digital drawing, um, transferred it to, uh, I printed it out, and then transferred it to this Bristol board uh, with the light box, which is right here underneath. Um, I'm not actually going to be turning the light box on because I'm done with that stage at this point. Um, but that allows me to get the, the framework and then I, I laid in all the flats or base colors, uh, which is something that I do also when I work digitally. Um, one of the differences is that uh, right now there's still just pencil outline. Uh, when I work digitally, it'll be uh, completely black. However, um, when you do that with the markers, uh, the, the markers tend to bleed and it'll, it'll make the line a little bit blurry. Um, and so what I'm going to do is after all the shading's done with the markers, then I'll go back in and I'll add the outlines with, um, just, uh, a, a thin, uh, Sharpie. Um, so, and one of the other things that you might, it, it looks all gray and it is gray, but there's actually four different types of gray on this paper right now. Um, I used French gray for the skin. Um, I have no idea why they call it French gray, but I, I like the way that ends up looking for skin tones. Um, the green of his outfit is uh, cool gray. Um, and I tend to use that for, you know, blues and greens and, and uh, things of that nature. Um, his eyes, the whites of his eyes, and then like the black on his costume. Um, that is all neutral gray. Um, and then the last thing I used around the eyes, um, the, the black makeup that kind of goes around his eyes when he has his mask on, uh, I used a warm gray um, just to give it a little bit of a differential so that the eyes pop a little bit more and so that there's, uh, it doesn't uh, bleed into the mask as much. Uh, that allows you to, to tell that that is uh, the makeup around his eyes. Um, and then I also, for the silver parts, I actually use a, a silver Sharpie. Um, when I work digitally, um, I tend to use uh, more of a mid-tone for, uh, for the, the flats or the base colors. Um, and then I work darker and then from the base tone up to light as well. With the markers, you can't really do that, so I, 
I used the lowest value, about 10% uh, gray on all the values just to lay in the flats. And then what I can do is get darker from there. Um, really the only way I can get lighter from that is by using white, um, which I am going to do, but um, you know, whereas in digital I can do three or four different highlight colors uh, and kind of gradually work up to the white. So um, I'm going to start with uh, his skin. Oh, okay, I'm being informed that my wife is monitoring the comments, so if you have questions or anything you want to relay, uh, she will pass it along. So we're just going to start with, uh, with some shading. Um, So this is the, the French gray, uh, again, for, for his skin tone. Um, this is the 20%. I had already laid down the, um, the 10%. Um, and so a lot of this is actually just going to be filling in the entire area again because uh, it'll be in shadow, so uh, it's going to go darker. Um, one of the things I love about drawing arrow uh, is is the lighting. Um, I like using a lot of black and, and shadows and, and things like that and uh, there's never any shortage of that when I'm when I'm drawing. Uh, basically with this, I'm just kind of creating the uh, the outline of the the different shades. Um, this is pretty much exactly the way I work when I work digital as well. Um, it's something that takes some getting used to. Um, but at this point, I don't know that I could do it any other way. <laughs> um, so. Got to make sure to Get the scruff in there. Ladies love the scruff. <laughs> yes, they do. Let's say ladies love every part of him. <laughs> Not just the scruff. <laughs> yeah, you're right. No questions, people? A 
I'm hoping there's no questions because they're just mesmerized. <laughs> Questions don't have to all be about the drawing either. They can be whatever you want to know, as long as it's PG-13. Hopefully, if uh, if I'm doing this right, the uh, the more shades that I do and add, the more you'll see his face kind of come into form. Um, you know, right now it's a little sparse because there's only a few patches of highlights compared to the one shade, but uh, slowly but surely. Moved on to French gray, 30%. One of the reasons I work in all the different gray tones is that uh, it allows you to get the different levels of shading um, that really isn't available uh, in terms of the Prismacolor markers. Um, for color, um, it's allows me to, to kind of duplicate my process uh, from digital uh, with the, the markers. And I know that there's there's other markers out there like Copic and, and whatnot that would probably allow me to do this in color, but uh, Prismacolor is pretty much what I developed my style using um, when I was in high school and college. So that's really what I'm most familiar with. And since I don't work traditional that often, um, you know, there's not a real big need for me to, to learn something new in terms of uh, traditional materials. I am being told that questions are coming through, but I'm not seeing them. Oh. So, our, we have a special helper out there who's telling me one of the questions was what kind of brand, you know, what kind and what brand do you use? I think you just covered that. Okay, yep. The other question is, how long does it take you to finish a piece? Um, digital, it takes about 10 hours to do a headshot uh, like this. Um, sometimes longer depending on the costume. Um, and then in terms of traditional, I would say this might take closer to three or four hours, um, depending on how detailed I want to go and, uh, you know, what kind of background I might put in and things like that. Good questions. Another one. How did you get into drawing? Um, I've been drawing pretty much my entire life. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, uh, especially, um, I've been posting some throwback Thursdays or turn back Thursdays or whatever it is, um, crayon drawings from when I was, 
like six years old. Um, and so pretty much since then, uh, I've been, been drawing my entire life. Um, for a while, uh, you know, in middle school and high school, I wanted to be a comic book artist. Um, and then uh, during that time, I was also playing playing baseball and um, doing pretty well. So then my, my aspirations turned to being a baseball player. Um, and after playing in college kind of near the, the end of my, my college career, it was pretty apparent that I wasn't going to be able to go pro. Uh, so um, I had been studying art while playing baseball in college and, and uh, was able to make a career out of it. Next question. You work in quiet space or have music or something playing? I usually have music playing. Um, or sometimes even podcasts. Um, it it's, uh, it's quiet right now because uh, I don't I don't want you to be distracted by the music. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I like to I like to have music playing. Um, I was actually telling my wife the other day that uh, I have a funny recall where I can actually, if I hear a song on the radio, I can actually remember something that I was drawing while listening to that uh, a long time ago. Um, That's amazing. <laughs> Not me. I can never. You want to give a shout out to the podcast that you listen to, or do you want to keep that a secret? Oh, um, sure. I listen to um, my favorite podcast is uh, Empire Online. Um, it's done by the people that do Empire Magazine, which is a, a movie magazine in the UK. Um, I'm a big movie buff, and so I really enjoy listening to that. They have interviews with all the actors and actresses and directors and um, they also do movie reviews and, and things like that that uh, I find really interesting um, and so that's one of them I also listen to uh, how did this get made which is uh, a very funny podcast um, where they kind of take an in-depth look at uh, Movies that maybe should not have gotten made. <laughs> um, and so they're, they're very funny. Um, at times I've listened to Fat Man on Batman, which is uh, Kevin Smith, um, or, or Babylon, which is also Kevin Smith. Uh, but the two main ones now are, are How Did This Get Made and... Uh, uh, Empire. Next question. What is your, or who is your favorite superhero to draw? <laughs> <laughs> Who's ans who's asking that question? Uh, my favorite superhero to draw, I think I mentioned earlier that I enjoy drawing Arrow. Um, I like I like the show a lot. Um, I you know I'm I'm. Uh, I can't think of the word. Um, I have a, a very deep respect for S Stephen Amell and, and all the charity work that he does and uh, the way he uh, interacts with his fans I think is, is awesome. Um, 
And then, like I mentioned before, I really like drawing dark shadows. <laughs> uh, and so there is absolutely no shortage of black when it comes to drawing arrow. Um, we have now moved on to French gray, 40%. What's the hardest piece or person you've ever drawn? Um, I was actually asked this yesterday. I was a, a guest speaker at um, an elementary school yesterday, which was a lot of fun. And somebody asked me that. One of the students asked me that. And... I will always prefer drawing people uh, and characters and, and things like that. I don't like drawing cars and buildings and uh, I'm much much more comfortable drawing uh, organic uh, things. It's, it's a little bit easier for me just because I, I don't have to be as precise. Um, So would you say that drawing your book, The Circle, is probably the hardest thing you've done? Absolutely. Drawing, drawing The Circle, um, which uh, is an illustrated novel I'm working on, I wrote it, um, I wrote the script, I would say, wow, nine years ago, and uh, it's, I, I, Funded it. I, I ran a, a campaign on Kickstarter for it um, in 2013, the end of 2013. Um, and it was successfully funded. Thank you, backers. Um, and it's, it's incredibly hard for me to do that because all the reference and, and all the backgrounds and everything, I have to, first of all, create. Uh, before I can even start drawing, um, and that that in itself is is very time consuming. Whereas if I'm going to draw something for Arrow or Flash or whatever, um, I just do a trusty old Google search, and am able to you know pretty much uh, within half an hour have everything I need to get started, um, and so creating. Uh, locations and, and characters from scratch uh, has been extremely time consuming. Um, it's been fun because it's, it's something that I've wanted to do for a very long time, uh, but it's definitely taking a lot more time than I ever expected. Is that you asking about the circle, or did somebody ask about that? That's me. Okay, that was you. <laughs> I should have known. <laughs> you want, did you want to tell them what it's about? Um, no. Okay. Question. Okay. Uh, when is the next Alter Ego piece debuting? And you might want to preface by telling people what it is in case they don't know. Okay. Um, so, excellent question. Um, I, I do a series called Alter Egos. Um, I've been doing it since uh, the beginning of 2015. Um, and it, it's essentially, I do a side-by-side -side of um, the civilian identity and the, the hero or villain identity. Um, and so it has been, I did series one, which was 2015, and I did 12, basically one a month, uh, plus three variants. Um, and uh, the first one was actually Arrow, of course. Um, and then 
Series 2 has been this year, 2016. Um, there are two left that have not been revealed. Um, and I've also been running contests on our Facebook page where I'll post kind of the background of the, the piece without the characters there. Um, and each, each background has the color scheme that's pretty much related to the character. And uh, from that, I'll have people guess which, which character it is. And uh, whoever is the first to correctly guess the identity of the alter ego um, receives number one of 100. Um, and so I will actually be uh, posting the contest for the next one, which would be the November release, uh, Monday. I think it's... I, I scheduled the post, I believe, for Monday at 3 o'clock Eastern Time. Um, so make sure to look out for that, and uh, good luck with your guessing. Um, I think what we might do, um, my last convention of the year is going to be Heroes and Villains, uh, November 19th and 20th in Atlanta. And so... I'm going to actually release the December uh, entry early so that I have both November and December's at the show. Um, and for December, since it's the last one of Series 2 and since, you know, holidays and all that kind of stuff, we're feeling very generous. And not only will you win uh, number one of 100 from the December release, uh, you will win six other alter egos from, from the series. So, I can't pronounce this guy's name, so I'm not going to try, but where did you get your light board? I had, um... I had a much larger one uh, a long time ago, and it was just way too cumbersome. I had to actually set it up like a table, um, which was great for larger drawings, but not great for when you don't have room. Um, and so I gave that one away. This one, I either got it from BlickArt.com or maybe even Amazon.com. Um, I don't remember. It's, uh, the Artograph Light Tracer 2 light box, if you're interested. Are we going to London? For <laughs> Heroes and Villains? Yes. Yes, we are. We are going to London. We're very excited about it. Um, yeah. I've never been there. Um, my wife has. Um, but it's, uh, it's very exciting. I, I love the Heroes and Villains uh, conventions. I love the crew that, that puts them on. Um, They've been so incredibly good to me, and uh, um, I love seeing them at, at all the shows and, and uh, talking to them online and, and everything. So, so yes, we are we are going, and uh, I'm gonna get to see a whole new whole new country, or at least part of a country. So, Jen O'Brien is asking who your top three characters, your top favorite characters are to draw. So, next to Arrow, what are your next two? Um, let's see. Next to Arrow... Let 
That's an excellent question. Superman. I, you know, I've drawn a lot of Superman. Um, I don't. I. I don't know that I could say that he's my favorite though. Um, I not actually. Not your top three. No, probably not. Um, I did a lot of Christopher Reeve uh, art for his foundation um, many, 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 many years ago. Um, and I don't know if that got it out of my system or, or what. Um, I've since drawn Brandon Routh as Superman and I've drawn Henry Cavill. Um, I've drawn uh, Tom Welling from Smallville. Um, so he's definitely, other than Arrow, I think he's definitely the character I've drawn the most. Um, I do like, I like trying different characters. Um, it's it's always fun to kind of challenge yourself um, and so if there's a character that has a costume that seems like it might be a challenge or um, uh, you know a different a different actor or actress's face that uh, might be difficult for me to do. I, I, I like trying new things. But I always seem to come back to Arrow. Someone wants to know about reference. Did you talk about that already? Uh, no, I did not. Um, so reference, especially when you're trying to get the accuracy of a likeness, is really important. Um, I don't know any artist alive uh, unless they're incredibly gifted that can draw... Uh, a likeness without looking at a picture. Um, I know there's some artists that can look at a picture and maybe draw the face in a different angle or, or something like that, and that's that's really impressive. Um, I, I am not that guy. <laughs> uh, but I think it's it's really important. And you know, any even even uh, comic book artists will tell you you have to use reference, uh, whether it's for a background or a car or a weapon of some kind, of, of drawing or painting or whatever. Now, one of the things I will say is is you don't have to be a slave to the reference. Um, you can you can do things to make it look better. Um, one of my my idols uh, is Drew Struzan, and um, uh, if you don't know the name, you know his work because he he's done hundreds of, of movie posters um, and he would always say that there's something about art that you can give uh, give life to the subject uh, that might not necessarily be there in the photograph and uh, and so I think that that's you know that's one thing to keep in mind when you're doing the 
using the references, don't don't just do what you see. Um, you know, it's it's got to be kind of your interpretation of the reference. And uh, um, so I think it's it's definitely reference is important, but it's not the the be all end all. Um, Trista Cadmium wants to know if you're going to draw season five Green Arrow. Eventually, of course, yeah. I've, I've drawn season one, season two, three with with the, the mask. Um, the season one was with the grease paint. Um, and yes, I definitely want to draw the season five. Um, I, I actually like it. A lot. Uh, I'm a big fan of the sleeves. I was. Um, I liked a lot of this season four costume that I'm drawing right now, um, but I did not like the bare arms. Just from a tactical standpoint, it seemed like uh, it made more sense for him to have uh, sleeves because it would be. First of all, it's always it always looks cold and rainy in Star City, um, but also just in terms of fighting and and you know going around the city and everything, you you need protection. So, so yes, eventually I will get to it. David Jones wants to know if you have any interest in trying animation. Um. Not really. I uh, when I was in college, my my concentration was actually computer animation, and um, I couldn't get a job. <laughs> uh, part of the problem was that I wasn't really willing to move to California, which was silly on my part. Um, but I ended up starting Odyssey um, in 2001, I believe. And, uh, and that was, you know, that has been pretty much what I've done ever since. Um, one of the things with animation is you have to be able to draw a lot of things really fast. And, uh, Fast is not what I do either. Um, I'm I'm completely envious of of my friend Lord Mesa because he's not only really good and extremely clever, but he's so freaking fast. Um, and that's just that's not me. I can't can't do that. By the way, hi, David. <laughs> um, if anybody wants to um, talk to us after this is over, email us at info at odysseyart.net. Should I repeat that? Okay. Oh, I don't know if they can hear you. Oh. But... Um, the boss just said that if anyone wants to talk to us afterwards, uh, cause I don't know how long this can stream for, um, you can email us at info at odysseyart.net, um, which is right up there. And, uh, and we can get back to you quickly. Um, Obviously, you can also post on our, our Facebook page or uh, we're on Twitter and Instagram. Your mother-in-law would like to know uh -oh. if her grandson helps you. <laughs> helps me how? He's helping me right now because he's sleeping. That's true. <laughs> and that's, that's a huge help. We were definitely worried about yeah. whether he was going to be awake and crying for this. 
Um, Brian Hester is asking about your the first superhero you learned to draw or learned to draw well. Um, I actually drew Superman a lot when I was a kid. Um, I was very much a fan of the Christopher Reeve Superman movies, and I would draw him in crayon. Um, and actually, I, I posted some of those old crayon drawings, um, and one of them was him ripping open his shirt uh, to reveal the S, and uh, unknowingly, I did the exact same pose, same angle, same everything. 21 years later, uh, as a digital piece, and uh, I found I found the crayon drawing, you know, after I had finished it, and it was like, unbelievable, I couldn't believe that I had done the exact same thing. Richie Lojek wants to know how long you've been attending conventions. Let's see, uh, well, to sell. oh, to sell, um... I think 2003 was my first one. Um, I had been working for a, a toy company, um, uh, NECA, NECA, as most people call it, um, and we had done conventions. Um, and I was I was working one of the conventions. Um, And I was walking around the artist section, and I thought, this is pretty cool. Maybe I should try doing this. Um, and so I ended up setting up at the same convention that I decided to. They had a, they had, they, it was a um, chiller theater in uh, Secaucus, New Jersey. And uh, they had like a, a an October show, I guess, and then maybe like a March one. And so I, I set up in March, I'm pretty sure. Um, pretty much been doing it ever since. I took a little bit of a break for a while. Um, and then just recently, uh, a little bit over a year ago, um, I, left, I left NECA and, uh, and started doing the conventions and, and art full time. I have a question. Okay. I already know this, but you can. What inspired you to leave your stable job and do this full time? <laughs> um, so what inspired me to leave my stable job and do this full time? Um, well, my wife certainly had something to do with it. Um, she has been incredibly supportive, uh, not just for that, but for, for pretty much everything. Um, she's good at cracking the whip and keeping me on schedule and, and, uh, other than her, <laughs> I would say that it's something I always wanted to do um, and just never felt like I could make it work. Um, it just, it didn't seem possible until, uh, I'd say last year sometime, I started having some really good conventions and, uh, and that was... That was pretty much it. That kind of sped up the process um, of me thinking, hmm, I might be able to do this. So, I think you owe a little bit of thanks to Jen Sincero. Yes, Jen Sincero was a big, uh, big influence. Um, if you don't know who that is, she's a or an author, um, and she. She wrote a book called uh, 
uh, I don't remember the complete title. It's like how to stop living your mundane life and start being a great one. But anyway, the 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 title part that I remember is is it's called "You Are a Badass," and uh, it's was very inspirational. I uh, I got the audio book, um, and I listened to it probably about twenty times. Um, she's she's really funny, uh, and it was just kind of the kick in the pants that I needed to to finally get moving. Um, so. If, if anyone wants to find out more about that book, I'd be happy to post uh, a link or, or something like that. Um. Mia is asking for Natalie. Who's your favorite Marvel superhero? Hmm. Favorite Marvel superhero? Um, I know this is going to be kind of blasphemy because I'm known more for drawing the DC guys, but I was totally a Marvel guy growing up, um, and I, I kind of still am. Sorry. <laughs> uh, my favorite growing up was Spider-Man. Um, I'm a big fan of Colossus uh, from the X-Men, um, although I still think they could improve on his appearances in the movies. Um, but I like Cap. I've never really been an Iron Man fan until Robert Downey Jr. came along. He, uh, he made Iron Man a lot more interesting, in my opinion. Um, One of the things you'll notice as I as I go along with the different shades is that you actually use uh, the darker colors less and less. The more you know, the darker you get, the less you're going to use that color, just because uh, there's going to be less of that uh, shadow. Um, Will we ever go to Australia for our heroes and villains? If they have a heroes and villains, sure. I would love to. Although that jet lag would kill me. And Miss Anne, we know who you are, is asking for a friend. Can we maybe get a season five brought for Oliver? <laughs> Yeah, probably. I'd still like to do... I know that Steven might not like this because he hated the the wig, but I'd still like to do one from the island. Uh, you know, flashback Oliver. That's what happens with marker. <laughs> you drop it on the drawing and it can't erase it. Hopefully uh, we'll get to the point where that'll just get covered over. Is there any chance of you doing the new Superman on Supergirl? Actually, we watched the uh, the first episode last night, and I really liked him. Um, I loved all the uh, the kind of nods to the Richard Donner Superman, um, the Miss Hessmacher, and and the you know statistically speaking, flying is still the safest way to travel, and and uh, a lot of those lines. I thought they were great, and he looked good. The costume's good. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I don't know how long he's sticking around, but, uh, I definitely, definitely have him on my list.
Mike Zimmerman wants to know your thoughts on the new season. Uh, Arrow, I'm guessing. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, we only watched the first episode so far. We've we've been busy with New York Comic Con, um, prepping for it, and then um, we, you know, those are some really really long days uh, in Artist Alley because Artist Alley actually that New York Comic Con stays open an hour later than the show the show floor, um, and so we have not had time yet to watch anything more than the first episode. I'm really curious to see what the new recruits are going to be like. It's uh, it's going to be fun to watch Oliver kick their butt, whip them into shape. Um, and the fact that they got Dolph Lundgren as a, a villain is amazing. And Cody Rhodes is going to be on it. and I mean... Should be good. I also, I can't wait for the crossover with all the shows. I think that's going to be amazing. So, how long would you say... Or how close would you say you are to completion with this piece? Um, it's going to be a while. Because that's just his skin. I that's His skin is finished. Um, you know, I would have to go in and I'm going to do some highlights with a, a white colored pencil. Um, but I'll probably wait until all the rest of the shading is done before I do that. Um, I'm just going to move on to his eyes now. But... I mean, you can see how long that took just to do, you know, a very small portion. Granted, the face is the most important part of it. Um, it's the thing that you really need to kind of nail. Um, but it still took a long time. <laughs> Any other questions, guys? I wanted to thank everybody again for tuning in. This was a uh, much bigger success than I could have hoped for, I think, uh, uh, in no small part because of Stephen, uh, you know, notifying everyone. But uh, hopefully if you guys enjoyed it, um, We'll do it again sometime soon. Um, I also just wanted to remind everybody that uh, if uh, you haven't already, um, you have until Monday the 17th. Uh, if you order $20 or more from my store, uh, you have a chance to win um, this Arrow shirt. This was a sample from the t-shirt company uh, that I, I work with. Um, and it'll just be kind of randomly inserted in somebody's, somebody's package when we, uh, when we pack it up and send it off. So um, I will post the final uh, piece when I'm done. Um, but again, thank you everyone for tuning in. Um, it was fun. I had fun talking about all different kinds of stuff. Um, so again, if you want to get in touch with us, it's info at odysseyart.net. And you can also just post on our page, uh, Odyssey Art on Facebook or Odyssey Art Torch on Twitter. Um, I th think that's it. Boss, am I missing anything? I think you're good. Okay. Thanks, guys. Have a good night and have a, a good weekend.